Hello, welcome to Glorious Word Empowerment. This is Pastor Mirabel coming to you with another powerful word. Please, as you join, watch till the end. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Why I was studying the book of Joshua, chapter 7. This was the children of Israel still on their way to the promised land. And Joshua was their leader. While they were on their way, they had to cross a land called Ahai. And Joshua had sent spies to go and spy the land to know how many people are there and how they should prepare for battle to go against them and the men returned to Joshua and said Ahai is a very small land with very few people we don't need all of our men to go there and bother themselves let's just send 2,000 to 3,000 of our men and they will go up there and win the battle but from verse 1 of Joshua chapter 7 it says it says that but the Israelites were unfaithful in regards to devoted things, some of the things that were devoted just for God, some of the Israelites were, were, were unfaithful. And he specifically named here that Achan, one of the men, took some of the things that were meant specifically for God. And the Lord's anger, the, the Lord was so angry with them. The Lord burned with anger for them. And so because of that, when Joshua had heard the, 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 the advice of the people, the spy that went up to Ahai, and he sent 3,000 men up there to Ahai, and when they got to Ahai, the few men in Ahai were able to beat them and even kill 36 of their men. When this happened, Joshua was so confused, and he went down, and he lay down flat on his face to the Lord, and he began to cry before the ark of God. He began to ask questions. Why have you brought us here for us to suffer? And now the Lord responded to him and said, some of your men are being unfaithful and that is why I am so angry. They have sinned against me. They don't follow my instructions. All I'm telling them is to go according to my way and I will lead them through, but they have refused. And so he gave them instruction on what they should do. All they had to do was sort out who was, who had done wrong amongst the children of Israel. And then they were going to stone that person to death. But in our generation, in this New Testament, you know what? The Lord does not really get angry with us. What happens is we block ourselves from accessing the grace of God or from accessing the throne of God. How do, how do I mean that? The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I have iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I am sinful in any way, I will not be able to approach the throne of grace to ask for mercy. Child of God, whenever we do things against the Lord, he is not angry with us. His arms are always open. Jesus is always by his right, right hand side to intercede for us, to say, oh, look, forgive them, forgive them. Remember, I died for them. He's always interceding on our behalf. So the Lord is not always turning his face away from us or he doesn't burn in anger for, for, for us, but we block our way. We hinder our way from assessing the throne of grace because we have iniquity. And therefore, as children of God in this new generation, in this new testament, all we have to do is fall onto the throne of God. Go before God in prayers and begin to ask him, forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for all my iniquities. With Joshua, they had to stone Achan because that was the instruction of God. But in this generation, all we need to do is to acknowledge the fact that we have sinned. We cannot continue to hinder ourselves. Sometimes we feel like the Lord is not hearing us. He is never far from us. We are always blocking ourselves from him. We are always hindering ourselves. Hindering ourselves from miracles, from our testimonies. Because we have done something wrong and we do not want to amend. Or some of us don't understand how we can amend it. So if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It's not like the Lord will not hear you. It is directly telling you, all you need to do is come before the throne of glory and ask for mercy. Bring your whatever situation you're going through, whatever blockage that you have presented by yourself in your life, just bring it before the throne of God and say, my father, my God, I have sinned against you in this area. And because of that, I have hindered myself from accessing your glory. Please forgive me. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Wash me and purify me. There is no amount of sin that God cannot forgive. We can only hinder ourselves, but there is no amount of 
sin that God cannot forgive. Our God is ever loving, ever kind, ever faithful, ever sure. He is very certain about the love he has for us. Jesus himself is very certain. If, if he wasn't certain, he wouldn't have died on the cross. But he died for you and I. So whenever we find ourselves in any kind of situation, we feel him that let us go before the throne of God and ask for mercy. And he is faithful to forgive us. There are many that are out there going through challenges in their lives. And all they need to do is to approach the throne of grace and ask for mercy. The Bible says we should come before the Lord, approach the throne of grace and ask for mercy. That is all we need to do, child of God. You cannot continue to hinder yourself. You cannot continue to beat yourself. Some even go as far as letting the devil speak to their, to their ears, speak to their minds and to their heads and to say, oh, I'm not qualified enough to become a child of God. Oh, because of the sins I have committed, Christ cannot listen to me or Jesus cannot listen to me or he cannot forgive me there is no amount of sin that is greater than the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus was given for your sake for your justification for your sanctification for your salvation so today if you hear my voice bring yourself onto the throne of glory and ask for mercy I begin to pray for you today Receive grace to approach the throne of grace. Receive grace to approach, approach the throne of mercy. Receive grace to come before the Lord and ask for mercy. Receive grace, my God. Receive grace to take away the hindrance from your face. I pray for you that the grace for you to come before the Lord may it fall upon your life in the name of Jesus. I pray that God should soften your heart and direct you towards the throne of grace direct you towards the Lord Jesus so that you will receive salvation. You will take the obstacle away. You will take the hindrance away. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for you the grace to be strong in the things of God. My God, the grace to continue to run the race faithfully. May it fall upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus that you will never weary in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be tired in the mighty name of Jesus. But you will continue to run the race. You will continue to run the race faithfully. You will continue to run the race faithfully. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Shalom.